why do banks need to merge? State Bank of India was actually built with the national vision. Those days it was required because they had to operate everything physically. You got internet banking, you got mobile banking, you got a lot of other facilities. Why do you need to have these state specific banks? So you need to have one national bank owned by government of India, or at least majority owned by government of India. The cash flow, how does it impact those things? With the advent of technology, this is very seamless. I think when three years back when this merger happened with these banks, we didn't even realize. You would have seen every budget, government is bailing out these PSU banks to compensate their NPA. Should I always bother about my personal interest or the societal interest, the national interest? So basically, this is in the interest of a common man. Absolutely, it is in the interest because we are the nation, we are the government. It's yeah. our money off. My friends, if we talk about the history of modern banking in India, it originated way back in the 18th century. The first banks were the banks of Hindustan, established in 1770. And since then, the Indian banking has gone through a lot. It has gone through a lot of changes, which we can call evolution. But the question is, have we evolved the right way? Hi, my name is Junad and welcome to Freedom's YouTube channel. My friends, I have a lot of questions to cover. The first one is, I got to know about the latest update about this PSU bank merger. What is that? How is it going to impact me, the common man? So to cover the same, I have got somebody very special with me who is always ready and available and loves to talk on any topic which is in the interest of the common section of the society. So let's welcome Mr. C.S. Sudhir, the founder and CEO of Freedom Map. Sir, first of all, tell us how is your health and banking both? <laughs> <laughs> My health is good. My financials are also good. Okay, so first of all, please tell us why do banks need to merge? So think about it. When you talk about all these banks in India, especially the PSU banks, State Bank of India was actually meant with the, you know, built with that national vision. Otherwise, State Bank of Hyderabad meant for that region. Correct. State Bank of Mysore meant for this region. Hmm. You know, Canara Bank was actually started in South Canara, the Mangalore region. Hmm. Vijaya Bank was again started here. Even Syndicate Bank was started here. And Bank of Baroda, again, region specific. Like this Punjab National Bank, hmm. Jammu and Kashmir. State Bank of Maharashtra. Maharashtra. <laughs> All these banks were started with that regional perspective in mind. Okay. But then those days it was required because they had to operate everything physically. Correct. There was no centralized core banking system. There were a lot of restrictions. But then things have changed today. You got core banking system, you got internet banking, you got mobile banking, you got a lot of other facilities. Why do you need to have these state specific banks? Okay. Right? So you need to have one national bank owned by government of India or at least majority owned by government of India. I would take the example of LIC, okay. Life Insurance Corporation of India. Today we just have one public sector life insurance company. Hmm. That was not the case earlier. Before nationalization of LIC, there were many life insurance companies. Correct. Then we brought them down to Right? Under one umbrella. Because of that, hmm. it's been now what? I think about almost a good 25 years of a privatization of insurance companies. Hmm. I mean, they allowed private companies to venture into life insurance business. Hmm. Even after 25 years, LIC is still the largest life insurance company. And I don't think anybody is going to beat them at least in the next 20 years. For sure. Correct? Hmm. That's because there's only one. Hmm. In the current scenario of banking, in fact, we had 27 banks, we brought them down to 12. Now, government is thinking about bringing them down to four or five. See, today, in a particular road, if you go, you'll see four or five nationalized banks. Hmm. Same road. There'll be one State Bank of India, 
they'll be on Punjab National Bank, mm. they'll be on Kendra Bank. Mm. Why? Why are they wasting their money? It is the same owner. Correct. Right? They're wasting on branch setup. Mm. They're wasting money on staff salary. Mm. Operational cost. Absolutely. See, that was required earlier when they had, you know, okay, even if you say that, okay, those region specific banks were allowed to operate only in their regions. Mm. Now, for example, if they say that, okay, State Bank of Mysore should not operate outside Karnataka. Correct. It is region specific. But that was not the case. Even at the time of merger of all the state banks with State Bank of India, they had their branches outside their core region as well. In fact, across the country. Because what happened, I'll tell you, with the improvement in transportation, people started moving from one city to other. Now, I have a bank account with, let's say, State Bank of Mysore. Hmm. I travel to Delhi. I want to operate my account in Delhi. Which means I obviously expect a bank branch there. That means it dilutes this purpose of region specific banks. Mm. Right? So people have become you know, very mobile today, right? We move from one place to other place very fast. So keeping that in mind, reducing the number of banks from 12 to 1 mm. is my suggestion. Okay. Government is thinking about 4 or 5. But I suggest the way we have LIC, we just have to have one. State Bank of India. That's it. That's it. Just one bank. Merge everything. But make sure you shift your branches. Wherever you've got five branches of one, you know, PSU banks, you move them to nearby villages. Make sure you have a branch in every village. Create banking facility everywhere. Reach out to common people. Absolutely. Create micro branches, smaller ones, and cut down the cost. See, I'll tell you what happens. You know, as a bank, if the bank is spending more money, mm. losing money, why, why are they losing money? Because they're wasting money in setting up so many branches, hiring so many people. Whose money it is? Either it is the depositor's money mm. or those who pay higher interest on their loans. Mm. That's how they are. Or the taxpayer's money which government is bailing out. Mm. You would have seen every budget, government is bailing out these PSU banks to compensate their NPAs. Right? So this has to be addressed and this can be addressed only when government merges these banks. So being a common man, there are a lot of questions in my mind, which a lot of people might have and also we need to address that should people protest against such things or not. Also, I would like to know what about the like uh, bank account numbers or the ATMs about the cash flow, how does it impact those things? See, I mean, if you would have asked me this question 15 years back mm. about bank merger, mm. I would have said, hey, it's going to be a mess, man. <laughs> it's going to be very tough to manage. Uh. But today, with the advent of technology, mm. this is very seamless. I think when three years back when this merger happened with these banks, mm. we didn't even realize. It just happened. Maybe one or two weeks, you'll have some here and there some issues, but going to be seamless, flawless. Technology can make that happen. So I think as a common man, you should not be worried about your bank account number. There may be some change in your IFSC code, hmm. bank account number, but that's a one time thing. Okay. You might have to get your checkbooks exchanged. All right, right. All those things are very temporary and one time. Hmm. See, think about it. Should I always bother about my personal interest or the societal interest? The national interest. If I think about me, hey, just because of the bank merger, I have to go to a bank branch, I have to get my checkbook exchanged, I have to get my new ATM cards, new credit cards. I agree, but it's a one time work. Correct. Think about the national interest, amount of national saving. Hmm. Now, Government of India, instead of running five branches of five different banks in one particular town, they will just run one. The amount of saving is going to be huge. So basically, this is in the interest of a common man. Absolutely, right? it is in the interest because we are the nation, we are the government. It's yeah. our money off track. Okay, one more question, sir. How does this thing impact the GDP? See, in terms of GDP, the total transactions will not go down. Hmm. The total transactions will remain the same. Okay. But then the bank frauds will stop. 
So there are 12 public sector banks. Hmm. I need one personal loan or a business loan. Hmm. What Nirav Modi did or what Vijay Mallya did is this. Hmm. So what they would do is they would go to 10 banks hmm. same day. They will prepare 10 different loan applications. Hmm. They apply to all banks on the same day. Okay, that is the. By doing that, see what happens if I apply today with one bank. After 10 days with one bank, they will get to know. Correct. Or after a month with one more bank, hmm. because the credit bureau will be able to tell us, hmm. okay, this guy is applying for loan elsewhere. Hmm. But if I apply on the same day, hmm. they won't know. Correct. Correct. Then what happens? They will take money from all banks, which means 10 banks. If I'm applying, I might take 10 times more than my eligibility, hmm. and then I'll not be able to pay back. Hmm. I will default on my loan. and i will cheat the bank which means i cheat the public so it is basically in the interest of you and also in the interest of the country as a nation Absolutely. whole also sir people might have this question that after this thing how uh, trustworthy will it be to keep our uh, finance or keep our money in the bank or gold in the bank so is it going to impact that part also or it is going to be more safe as you mentioned absolutely when you have one bank yeah. it's going to be easy for government to manage and to track things absolutely in fact after the merger of these banks from 27 to 12 mm. the bank productivity has gone up mm. accountability has gone up mm. government can actually invest more to uh, uh, build better technology for you know that those limited banks mm. see now imagine if you have to build core banking system for 12 banks mm. manage servers data centers for 12 banks mm. how much you spend If you have one bank, you spend less. Correct. So that's the way government is going to save, and that's the kind of, you know, protection, safety people will get. Of course, fantastic. So I think that's pretty much about it. So in case if you are protesting against it, then this was the episode for you, so that you can come to know this is in the interest of the nation. This is in the interest of you as well. Thank you so much for taking out time Bye -bye. for us. and uh, for to watch such more interesting topics wherein we cover the needs of a common man you need to do one thing that is subscribe to the channel and number 2 hit that bell icon thank you so much once again for giving out your time sir and thank you so much for all the viewers that you have taken out time to watch this episode uh, my name is junaid khan and i am signing off for now see you soon in the next interesting video on freedom app and freedom's youtube channel